These five Republican candidates for governor could be out of the race for including thousands of forged signatures in their petition to make the ballot. We have team coverage tonight. Political reporter Rick Albin will break down what comes next. First, though, we want to begin with News 8's Byron Tollefson, who spoke with experts about how we got here. Campaigns need to submit 15,000 valid signatures to make the ballot for governor. Instead of campaigns doing it themselves, many pay signature gatherers. For a statewide race where you've got to collect thousands of signatures, it's quite common for campaigns to basically outsource that activity, to hire a firm that's responsible for hiring the people to actually collect the signatures. After the campaign submit the required signatures, the Bureau of Elections reviews them. They are you know, reviewed line by line, uh, and the Bureau strikes any that it recognizes contains errors or are otherwise invalid. In calling for the five candidates to be removed from the ballot, the Bureau of Elections says the campaign submitted thousands of fake signatures. The Bureau says there were clear signs of fraud, like using the same handwriting for multiple signatures, voter names being misspelled, identical pages, and even using names of deceased people. There was apparently nobody that was paying attention to the actual uh, signature gatherers to make sure that they were doing the job that they were hired to do. Republicans like gubernatorial candidate James Craig are putting blame on the signature gatherers, saying they deliberately sabotaged his campaign, which was, quote, defrauded by these criminals, whether for political or monetary gain, and they must be held accountable for their actions, end quote. And a consultant for Perry Johnson put blame on signature gatherers, saying the alleged forgers victimized five campaigns. You know, signature collection is a pretty common thing. Uh, and for, for this many candidates to be affected, I think, is a, is a pretty big deal. John Clark, the chair of political science at Western Michigan University, says it is realistic the campaigns had nothing to do with this. Uh, one of the things that, that tipped off the the uh, Bureau of Elections is the fact that there were these similarities across campaigns, but each campaign didn't see those other campaigns. Each campaign only saw their own petition sheet. Some states ban the practice of hiring signature gatherers. Michigan does not. Clark says this gives some momentum for a ban here, but he says it wouldn't fix the problem. When you open it up only to volunteers, uh, you still have the same sorts of problems. You still have the, the potential problem of fraud, Clark says the Bureau of Elections indicated in its report that it would lay out the possible fraud charges for the Attorney General's office to review. He says it's possible some of the signature gatherers could face criminal charges under Michigan's election law. Byron, thank you. The head of the Republican Party has this to say today in a release from his office. This is far from over. Democrats claim to be champions of democracy but are actively angling behind the scenes to disqualify their opponents in an unprecedented way. Unfortunately for them, Michiganders can see right through this act and can count on our party not only fighting for fairness but to provide voters with a choice this fall, end quote. And political reporter Rick Alvin on set now to join to talk a little bit about how this is going to play out, Rick. Well, right now, there are four people in the state that have a little bit of pressure on them. They are the board of canvassers. There are two Republicans and there are two Democrats. On Thursday, they will meet and review this report that we've been talking about. But that wasn't the first time that they've heard about this. They've been expecting this to come. They got it uh, at least when we did, maybe before we did, and they have all of this then to go through and decide, one, are there fraudulent signatures? And the report seemed to indicate that would be the case. Then, if there are fraudulent signatures, does that disqualify the ballots if the campaigns didn't know about it, or does it even matter? If they're fraudulent, they're fraudulent. Those are the things these four people have to decide. And by the way, the math is easy. You have to have three votes in order to sustain what the report said. You can get a 2-2 tie. If you do that, then we're going to be headed into litigation. And we'll know that after Thursday, I guess. Yeah, we'll after Thursday, what do you expect then? Well, that's, <laughs> that's when it's going to get interesting because there's a pretty short window, maybe to June 3rd, about a week, uh, to get litigation in. So if somebody wants to challenge this based on whatever they think they can, that somehow there was fraud that was committed against their campaign whatever that argument would be it has to be done pretty quickly and if as i would expect it ends up in the supreme court they would have to act pretty quickly too so we're in uncharted waters from the standpoint of seeing this many people 
with this many problems. Uh, but this has happened in the past, not on this scale. And we'll just have to see as we move forward how many Republicans actually end up on that primary ballot. Mm -hmm. Rick Alvin, yeah. thank you. You bet. Thank you, Rick.